Okay, we're live. Good morning and uh, good good early evening in the Netherlands, and we'll tell you why we're saying that. This is Greg Gloria, aka Social Greg, on Twitter for the Nerdstalker Media Network. Uh, today we talk with Hessel van Arshad, uh, the the chief noisemaker, as they call him, uh, the tribe of noise. Uh, Hessel's no stranger to the Nerdstalker uh, crew here. Uh, we met Hessel at SF New Tech during their Dutch pitch event you know, years ago, a few years ago now. I can't believe it, actually. And if you don't know the Tribe of Noise, they help indie musicians get noticed and even get paid. And it's as simple as that. It's a service. And we wanted to catch up with him because he has some new things that uh, we wanted to talk about here on Nerdstalker and wanted to catch up and discuss some of uh, you know those things directly with the Chief Noisemaker. Anyway, good morning, Chief Noisemaker, Hessel, and <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Nerd Soccer Live from Amsterdam, Netherlands, right? Good morning and good afternoon here, uh, uh, Greg. No, it's really nice to be in, um, in your show again. How are you? Oh, thank you. Good, good. Doing okay. You know, I, I, we were talking offline. It's, everyone's, the buzz here is the, is the election. In fact, <laughs> uh, what, 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 I was reading something on the media organization that I just wanted to bring this up real quick is that, because um, we're going to talk about media, is, is that, um, all the brands are complaining right now here because all the election people are buying up media time. <laughs> and, and so they're actually complaining they can't get any traction uh, during this period. So they're just going to wait it out until the election starts. So, so it's interesting. But we're going to talk about today something really new, new that you guys have actually launched. And uh, New, but, but all at the same time, right? It's just a different way of doing things. But anyway, we noticed that you made some interesting announcements last month. And uh, this thing, Biz Music, and a, and a joint venture with uh, music publisher, uh, Strenghold. So can you talk about that? Sure, 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 sure. Now, it was really funny. Like, I think two, two and a half years ago, I met the CEO of uh, uh, one of the oldest indie publishers, music publishers in the Netherlands, Strenghold. And uh, at a music conference that was called the uh, Future Music Forum in Barcelona, uh, so in Spain. And it's all about people looking forward, looking at the new industry and saying, like, uh, how can we help each other to really uh, reinvent the industry or at least transform the industry into new business models? Uh, I met the CEO. Uh, there was a click. Uh, we kept in touch. And roughly two years later, uh, we said, like, what we have to do because the whole world is moving into user-generated content. And as you know, a traditional publisher, of course, is normally only working on creating content, not really faci uh, facilitating content. So they are in this transformation process. We already have done that, uh, uh, but we still need like strong partners to align and help musicians to, to make it to the next step in all kinds of directions, you know, so more directions, the better. Um, so after two years, we said, like, why don't we join forces and start with something really simple that people can touch and, and, and use, and that's, that, that's Biz Music. And Biz Music is basically a Spotify for business environments, so a music service for restaurants, bars, hotels, retail outlets, shops that can play music in their store. We start with the traditional tribe, it's almost traditional, with the tribe of noise repertoire. So uh, rights included, uh, you don't have to pay the performing rights organizations for playing the music. The money that we collect from subscriptions goes, you know, part of that goes back to the artists that are participating in those uh, music shows that we feature. And then going on from that principle, we will start to also make programs with, for example, the music that Strenghold represents in the Netherlands from very known artists and DJs and producers. Or we can move into other directions where we say, like, why don't we mix up traditional music from known people that you hear on the national radio, but combine that with completely unknown artists so that we have music programs with both featured. And uh, this is a business model for them uh, to, you know, directly get in touch with uh, the end users, with people paying for the subscriptions or the companies, get that feedback and uh, create new business models from lessons learned. Because normally publishers, if you look at Spotify, Apple Music, uh, Pandora in, in the United States, um, normally the publishers is always somewhere at the back of the supply chain. So they never get that feedback from uh, the end user, like uh, is that music 
being played? Is there generating any money? That's normally the oh, music label. Wow. So, so that's basically, for them it's a learning curve and, and Biz Music is just tip of the iceberg because we have like a lot of things on the shelf that we want to test drive with them and also launch. Mm. Um, so this is just the tip of the iceberg. And, uh, and for us, it's also to continue to build new relationships with uh, known companies and music publishers um, who, who are in this transition phase, who just need to change it. Well, let's step back a little bit and, and yeah. explain, um, you know, why can't Spotify and Pandora do these business things kind of like what you're talking about? I mean, you know, or, or can they, you know? On paper, of course they can. You know, if, 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 uh, if you have uh, rights holders in the beginning and if you have a distribution network like uh, uh, Spotify and you have customers like shops and hotels and all the other ones, then, of course, on paper, you can connect the dots and say, like, okay, music coming in, Spotify is doing its magic, selling subscriptions to businesses, getting the money back to the rights holders. So that, that ecosystem, as we've built it in the last couple of years uh, with Tribe of Noise, is something that Spotify, Diesel, Apple Music could could do themselves. Uh, it starts to become a little bit more difficult if you if you look at the the politics behind music rights, because uh, for example, if you want to broadcast music as Spotify to stores, what will actually happen is you will Spotify will need a, a broadcast license like a radio station has. Uh, this is also the same thing that you always see on uh, the American news with uh, uh, Pandora and mm. uh, with uh, Sirius XM. They're always bargaining with uh, SCAP and BMI to get a better deal so that in the end, if they sell subscription, they can get some money in. Uh, so the, the politics, the licensing for big companies that are out there with already like uh, Spotify, I think they have like 100 million end users at the moment, so a lot. So they are really like, you know, in the spotlights, everybody looks at Spotify and Apple Music and, and what's going to happen. So for them to uh, change overnight and say like, oh, by the way, you know, if we license this in a different way, we can also do all these business models on the other side. That's, that's, that's pretty complicated. Uh, the good news is that Spotify is doing uh, test runs uh, on their home market. So in Scandinavia, they're doing test runs. Um, so it is something that they're looking into. Um, uh, but yeah, what we try to do is, you know, do it, first of all, do it with unknown artists so that mm -hmm. even unknown artists get money. And right. also figure out if there are like, you know, specific small markets that are really interested in, in, in high quality content, beautiful music programs, and uh, where just normal average radio shows are uh, not good enough because they want that specific sound for a specific uh, target audience. And, and what, what's happened now, I mean, not now, but I mean, and in the way that, like you're saying that since Spotify and Pandora really cater to the end user, you really, as a business, cannot use Spotify or Pandora over your speakers in your business, right? Uh, no, you need a different license. And then still, if you, even if you have a, a uh, country where they would allow that different license, so for example, in Scandinavia and Sweden, they have that different license, then still you have to pay, as a business owner, you still have to pay for broadcasting to your audience again. So uh, in some cases, the, the business owners just think it's too expensive. And um, in Europe, it's even a bit more complicated because we have more rights organizations than you guys have in the States. And in the States, we think it's even simplified. So go ahead. But, but in, in, in Europe, you have like, you know, every single country has its own performing rights organization, neighboring rights organization. Uh, in best cases, some of these countries talk to each other. So in best cases, if you have like a retail store, in, in several countries, you can actually, you know, make one deal for those countries. But uh, in general, if I look at a big chain like Subway, for example, with all these 
franchisees in all these different countries, in Europe you would have to make all these different uh, contracts with all the rights organizations. We will, that will just take you um, take you a lot of time. And hopefully, like models like Biz Music, where we have that uh, section from content owners to the loudspeakers at your uh, your local store, we, we know everything that's going on in, in that pipeline. Uh, hopefully, more of these concepts pop up and 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 help to uh, yeah to transition into new data models where hmm. people are getting getting paid. That's where you're you're absolutely right. I mean, in the digital space, you actually have control of all of that data, or you can have the potential of the control. But but I think in your model, which is interesting, is that um, you're democratizing everything by just saying, hey, as an indie indie musician, you now have as much opportunity, you know, as someone else who signed through a label to have your music listened to, which is really the bottom line, right? <laughs> but I, I, mean, I, I, was, I, I didn't come up with that idea. I mean, user-generated content is just, you know, that, that, that's here. That's, that's YouTube. That's Twitter. That's, that's, you know, all these beautiful services out there. And together, all of us, you know, also you with, with this broadcast, we are creating the content of today and the future. So, uh, of course, there are a few happy uh, top-notch uh, producers, musicians, whatever, who, who, you know, who can spend time, quality time in beautiful studios and, and work for two or three years on an album. But, you know, fact of life, most of the content that we consume today that brands are using in their campaigns, it's all user generated content and it's just great stuff it's you know it's the stuff that you and i relate to it's the stuff that i want to share with my friends so uh in general if if we wouldn't use indie artist or your next door neighbor to allow them you know to facilitate music to our platform then you know we we that, that wouldn't be fair because that that's it's not even the future that that's today. Yeah. Good yeah. luck to you there. Uh, Hessel. I think, uh, you know, you're really making, uh, you know, you know, probably in your mind, small strides, but small strides to ride the right direction to find out, you know, where, where, where will this business model eventually settle, you know, for a little bit, you know? So anyway, I, I really appreciate your time, man. You know, I know you're, you have to, you're more than, you're more than welcome. Really, uh, so, so anyway, uh, how can, <laughs> as we always end the show here, uh, how do listeners get a hold of you and get a hold of uh, Tribe Music and this new service called Biz and for businesses, Biz Music? Yeah. So uh, let's start with the last one. Biz Music uh, is uh, uh, was launched in in, in the Netherlands uh, recently. Uh, we're growing the business model now also to other countries. So everybody who's interested as a participant, uh, as a distributor or a reseller or somebody who just want to learn more about the model to see if it works in you know their part of the world, just go to uh, Biz Music, which ends on it with a Q, not not a music with a C. It's like the IQ from uh, yeah. Intelligent Service. Uh, so bizmusic.com. Um, how to get hold of me is with uh, uh, just via email or, or the website of uh, uh, Tribe of Noise. So Hessel, H-E-S-S-E-O at tribeofnoise.com. Um, and we're always on the lookout for uh, startups, like people with great ideas. One of the things I really want to develop in the, in the, in the near future is like a API portal going into all the data that we have so that if people have like crazy new ideas that I want to test drive with, with, with content or with content creators, you know, be my guest. You know, we, we really need uh, other people's ideas to, to build new businesses because what you just said like a couple of minutes ago, like uh, good luck with that business model and hopefully, you know, it, it will rest for a while or at least, you know, flourish for some while. Business models go faster and faster and faster. So, you know, there's there's no linear thought anymore in business models. So we need multiple access points and, 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 and business models to test drive. So anybody with new creative ideas to um, that they want to test with our, our content or our people uh, connect with us. And of course, last but not least, you know, anybody who makes great content, music or whatever, just, uh, you know, go to tribeofnoise.com and uh, see what we can do. 
Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I, I and I do a lot of videos, but you know, not 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 at the scale of anything that you know millions of people are going to watch. But, but uh, I use tribal noise. I mean, if I need a a, a intro overlay or whatever, I use tribal noise. Um, you know, it's a great great quality music. Uh, you know, high bit rate stuff. Uh, I mean, it's just it's just wonderful. So anyway, yeah, thanks so much again, Hessel, for joining us today. Um, anyway, that was Hessel von Arshot, uh, the chief noisemaker, as they call him, which is called the CEO in this country, but we call him the chief noisemaker over there in the Netherlands, uh, of Tribe of Noise, a platform helping musicians, indie musicians especially, and media professionals connect. And, um, and that's really what he was saying earlier. It, they're a service that connects people with, with other people to create even bigger media projects. So anyway, please register on tribeofnoise.com and get some great indie music and uh, for one of your media projects. Anyway, thanks for joining us, everyone. This is Greg Blair, AK Social Gray on Twitter for the Nerd Soccer Media Network, where we believe in tech, startups, design, and you. Thanks for joining us, everyone, and be careful. Hey, Hessel, have a great day, and uh, we'll, we'll catch up with you soon, okay? Perfect. See you next time. Bye-bye.